Hey everyone, Wednesday in the Word with Wes. And I'm standing outside this afternoon, and you can see that uh, uh, we've had some warmer temperatures the last couple of days, and in fact, it's supposed to uh, forecast to, to even get a little bit warmer. But with the warmer ten temperatures, the snow on this hill behind me has, has melted. And uh, that got me thinking about uh, a verse in one of the Old Testament prophets. In um, Amos chapter 9, uh, we find out something about who God is. In fact, in the book of Amos, uh, God is reminding his people that uh, they are, are going to be held accountable in the same way the nations uh, around them are held accountable because of their sin and wickedness and rebellion. And in Amos chapter 9, we're told this. Verse 5, the Lord, the Lord Almighty, he touches the earth and it melts and all who live in it mourn. And uh, when it just uh, the image that's given here is that just uh, like this snow that I hold in my hand, if I hold it there long enough, the heat from my hand is going to, to melt it and it's, it, it's going to turn back into water and, and disappear. That when God uh, touches the earth in judgment, the earth is going to melt. He is the one who's created it and he is the one who is going to reveal his his power and his judgment but also his wrath against sin and when that happens people people like you and me we're told our response will be mourning and sadness and grief and yet I'm so glad that the book of Amos and that the Word of God doesn't leave us there because later on in Amos chapter 9 in verse 11 God promises to do something great Verse 11, in that day I will restore David's fallen shelter. I will repair its broken walls and restore its ruins and will rebuild it as it used to be. He says, I will bring my people Israel back from exile and I will plant Israel in their own land, never to be uprooted from the land I have given them ever again, says the Lord your God. Did you, did you catch that word? Not only will there be mourning when, when the earth melts under God's uh, righteous judgment, but God is the one who promises restoration. He promised to restore David's um, kingdom and, and throne. And, and instead, he restored it with a far greater kingdom, the kingdom of his son, Jesus, who on the cross, in his death, uh, purchased the forgiveness of sins, that has, has opened the door for restoration and forgiveness and hope. And, and so, um, yes, God is a powerful God. That He is a God who will come in judgment, but he is also a God who has, who has made a way for his people to be restored to him through our Lord Jesus. And so I wanna pray today and thank God, both for his power, but also for his love and mercy. God, thank you for today, for Jesus, for the fact that, that he is the one who came to, to open the, the, the way of restoration. Thank you that, uh, God, he took your judgment that we deserved on himself, that our sin was paid for at the cross, and that because of Jesus, we do not need to, to stand in, in fear of, of your wrath and judgment against sin, but instead we can give you praise that you are the God who restores and provides and protects. And you've done it all through Jesus, and it's in his name that we pray today. In Jesus' name, amen.